Father, once again, we want to pause and give you thanks for your great grace, your great love, and the fact that you have given us your written word, your Bible. 66 different books written by over 40 authors, and yet, really, there's one author. You've penned it. You've wanted to express your love to us, your kids. You've wanted us to, you wanted to give us a guide, and we're grateful for that. I'm grateful for that. I'm so grateful. My life changes. I have ups and downs. Your word remains constant. It is that anchor of our soul. Please, Lord, illuminate the pages of Scripture today so we can grow closer to you. For the person in here that does not know you, I pray, maybe today for the first time, they would engage with you with a love relationship. Today would be the day of their salvation. They'd begin this faith walk with you. We know your word says, faith comes by hearing and hearing the word of God. May you reach them today. For the person who has skidded off track, would you bring them back on the path, Lord, with your love, with your grace, and your truth. And for the believer moving forward, continue to encourage them, as only you can do, by the power of your spirit, through your word, and we'll give you all the praise and glory. In Jesus' name, amen. John 18 and 28, to get us all on the same page, we are indeed in the book of John. We're in chapter 18. Last chapter in 17, we saw an intimate picture of Jesus praying um, before he was going to be arrested. He knows he's going to the cross. And in chapter 18, we actually saw when he was betrayed by Judas Iscariot and how he was indeed arrested in the garden. He is now, we're going to see in our text, going to be led to, um, to Pilate, who was the Roman governor at the time. We do know that at this time the Jews were um, basically oversaw, the Romans were in control of the world at this time, and, and they oversaw all of the Jewish um, area there in Israel. And so Pilate was kind of that guy who was delegated to be the governor, if you will, that, that Rome appointed governor over that area. And so Jesus, the Jews are going to bring them to Pilate and say, man, this dude is not good. You need to whack this guy. And we'll be able to see that today. So what we're going to do is a little bit different today. Um, we're not going to go um, and kind of dig into this text as much, but we're going to kind of do a topical towards the end of this. As I was studying, this one phrase jumped out to me, and I want to run with it. But first, I want to cover the rest of chapter 18, and then we'll dive into that, okay? That sound okay? A little bit different, so bear with me. But uh, let's jump into text. John 18, verse 28. Then they led Jesus from Caiaphas, who was the high priest, the Jewish high priest, to the praetorium. And the praetorium is, is, is a fancy word for the governor's kind of headquarters, the pilot's, pilot's crib, basically, the way his, his office, if you will. Um, and it was early morning. But they themselves did not go into the praetorium, lest they should be defiled, but that they might eat the Passover. The Jews said, man, we can't go into... The Rome's office, man, if we go into there, man, it's, we're, we're going to be unclean. We won't be able to celebrate the Passover, which was one of the Jews' main feasts that they celebrated. Verse 29, Pilate then went out to them. He saw these cats won't come into the office, so he goes out to them. And he says, what accusation do you bring against this man? Meaning Jesus. Verse 30, they answered and said to him, if he were not an evildoer, we would not have delivered him up to you. Isn't that interesting? They didn't give the accusation, did they? They didn't have anything to go on. They're just, they're just trying to make up an excuse. Man, we would bring him to you if he wouldn't have done something wrong. Verse 31, Pilate said to them, Well, you take him and judge him according to your law. In other words, if it doesn't have anything to do with us politically, and he's not a threat to Rome or to Caesar or to something, don't, don't bring us all that kind of stuff. You guys deal with it. 
you have a problem, he's messing with your law, the Jewish law, you guys go and judge him according to your deal. Therefore, uh, the Jews said to him, it's not lawful for us to put anyone to death, that the saying of Jesus might be fulfilled, which he spoke, signifying by what death he would die. Pause there. Basically, what the Jews were saying is, hey, you stripped us of our ability uh, to lay down capital punishment two years ago. So we have to bring them to you because this, this infraction that Jesus is saying, it's blasphemy, saying that he is God, it is deserving of death according to our law. But since you remove that ability to do that, to, to kill, to, um, to induce capital punishment upon him, you're the only ones that can do it. That's why we're bringing him to you. Verse 33, Pilate, then Pilate entered the praetorium again. He called Jesus this time. He's like, all right, I, I want to get, I want to stop messing around with all this stuff. Let me go to the source here. He calls Jesus and he says to him, are you the king of the Jews? And Jesus answered him, are you speaking for yourself about this? Or did others tell you this concerning me? Trying to decipher, all right, what, what's the deal here? What's your real motive? And Pilate answered, am I a Jew? Your own nation and the chief priests have delivered you to me. What have you done? Verse 36, Jesus answered, My kingdom is not of this world. If my kingdom were of this world, my servants would fight, so that I should not be delivered to the Jews. But now my kingdom is not from here. You remember the Jews were looking for someone, the Messiah, the one that would come in and would basically... Uh, free them from Roman bondage and set up this earthly kingdom. They were confused as they studied the scriptures. And so Jesus is saying, hey man, my kingdom is not an earthly deal. It's way bigger than that. I'm coming to set up an earthly or a heavenly kingdom, a spiritual kingdom. And it's not going to be in the way that all these people are thinking. Verse 37, Pilate therefore said to him, are you a king then? And Jesus answered, man, you said it. You rightly say that I am a king. For this cause I was born, and for this cause I have come into the world, that I should bear witness to the truth. That's the first time as I was studying, truth just bounced off the screen, so I circled it. Jesus is saying, hey man, you guys got all this wrong. I am, I am God. I've entered into this earthly kingdom to give you a picture of what is truth. At this time, you had all kinds of people saying, this is true, this is true, this is true. From all these different backgrounds, and I could just imagine God up in heaven going, all right, I, my people are confused, let's go. I'm going to go on a rescue mission and save my people, but I'm also going to make sure they know what the true picture is, finally. And he comes. Continue on. Everyone who is of the truth hears my voice. You can jot in your Bibles real quick, 1 Corinthians 2.14, which basically says this in a nutshell. It says the natural man, in other words, the person who is not a Christian, who has never been repented and never received the Holy Spirit, the truth of God, they, they can't hear God. The natural man, it's impossible for them to hear God because without the Holy Spirit, they can't discern the spiritual things. 1 Corinthians 2.14. Verse 38, then Pilate said to him, and, and this is... This is going to be the, the rest of our Bible study. Pilate said to him, what is truth? Boom. As I'm studying, that blew up. And, 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 and feel me for one second. I'm just thinking, in our culture today, that question right now. Some of you in here right now, you're not a Christian, and you are plagued by this. What is truth? I hear all in our community, I hear all in the world, different people saying, this is truth, this is the way, this is what works, and you're getting a million messages, as I would imagine the same thing was going down here. And Pilate says, what is truth? Now, he could have been sarcastic and been, what is truth, Jesus? But as I was studying it, I, I, I got nailed by it. And here's the thing, there are many people Searching for truth. And if you're a Christian here today, God has called you and I to present the truth to them in love.